Sandy's Tree Dome is essentially an air-filled underwater habitat that could support mammalian life. In the show, supposedly the tree and grass provide enough oxygen for her to survive. But could that really be possible? Would her tree dome work in real life? I'm your host as always, k Time, and welcome to the very first episode of Cartoon Mythbusters, where we take a closer look into physics and possibilities of some of the biggest questions to come from your favorite cartoons. No. Is mayonnaise an instrument? No, Patrick, mayonnaise is not an instrument. So when you think about what it takes to support a mammal, it comes down to a handful of essential things needed. Oxygen, temperature, and of course, food and water. Now Sandy is shown eating acorns from the tree as well as other under the sea food. Not to mention that she could travel in her underwater suit to get food from let's say the Krusty Krab and return to her dome and eat it there. As for water, she most likely has what's called a solar distillery, which is used to convert salt water into fresh water. It's a simple and easy way to have an endless supply of fresh water. So let's move on to temperature. According to the scientific article titled, quote, Temperatures of Hibernation and Changes in the Body Composition of Ground Squirrels Over Winter. And yes, that's a real scientific journal article. Anyway, it says that ground squirrels can survive in temperatures as low as negative 18 degrees Celsius or negative 1 degree Fahrenheit. So with that in mind, let's figure out what the temperature would be in Bikini Bottom. Now it's commonly speculated that Bikini Bottom is based off of the real life nuclear test site Bikini Atoll, which has a depth of just over 60 meters or near 200 plus feet. The depth is relatively shallow compared to the deepest parts of the sea. This graph shows that the ocean temperatures at that depth are actually high enough to sustain a ground squirrel. So far, so good, right? We've got food, water, and temperature high enough in the tree dome for it to work. So let's keep going and take a look now at the oxygen levels. So we all know that plants produce oxygen, but how much? And would there be enough from one tree and just a few smaller plants and grass in the tree dome to be able to provide enough oxygen for a mammal to survive? Now, according to chemistryabout.com, the amount of oxygen produced by a single tree depends on the tree's size, health, and the type of a tree. As we can see, the tree in the tree dome is a leafy tree, and from the acorns, we can tell that it's none other than an oak tree, and it appears to be in perfectly good health. Now, that same article states, and I quote, a single mature tree can absorb carbon dioxide at a rate of 48 pounds per year and release enough oxygen back into the atmosphere to support two full-grown human beings, which is more than enough for one ground squirrel to survive off of, so we're good on oxygen as well. Now, according to Sandy, the dome is made out of a polyurethane, which is a comprehensive strength of just under 20,000 PSI. Now, how much weight could that support? Let's just be generous and assume that the dome is a meter thick. The internal pressure in a wall, spherical shell, is defined by the equation PR over 2T, whereas P is the pressure, R is the radius of the shell, and T is the thickness. This means that the maximum pressure equal in the stand is C times 2T over R, whereas C in this case is 20,000 PSI, meaning that the dome could withstand up to about 3,200 PSI of pressure before it would break. That is about 218 atmospheres. And since we know that oceanic pressure increases by about one atmosphere of pressure for every 10 meters, it would have to be around 2,180 feet deep before the dome would shatter. Now being that the Bikini Atoll is only about 200 plus feet deep, the dome would not break under the pressure of the sea. So let's recap. The temperature is high enough, there's ample food and water and oxygen, and the dome would withstand the oceanic pressure. So we're all good then, right? Well, not so fast. Even though we've established a single tree could hypothetically provide enough oxygen needed, there's still one more thing needed for that. The sunlight needed to keep the tree alive. Now, some light does make it to that depth. In fact, many small life forms use photosynthesis all the way down to 600 plus feet. However, it would certainly not be enough light to support the photosynthesis needed to keep a tree of that size alive. Not to mention that she's probably using the solar energy to distill her water. There wouldn't be enough sunlight. Some would get through, but it wouldn't be enough to distill the water and to keep a tree of that size alive. Therefore, the idea of a self-sustaining underwater tree dome falls just short of being possible, at least at that depth. So uh, there you guys have it. Sandy wouldn't be able to live in Bikini Bottom long before her tree died and her oxygen ran out and she'd be forced to move back to the surface. 
But that's all we have time for in this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this new series. If you guys did, make sure you guys drop a video, a like, and subscribe. If we get this video to 750 likes, I'll release next Cartoon Mythbusters episode a week early for you guys. As always, remember that it's always KMAC time somewhere, guys. Until then, take it easy. And peace out. Horseradish is not an instrument either.